to create log analytic workspace you have to just search for the resource called log analytics and you would be getting as the workspace specific and if you see if I just click on that I would be actually getting here different workspaces that I have already created and uh, these are used for a different purpose so I don't want to you know mix up these things with our demo let me create one new log analytics workspace by clicking on add button that would load another blade where I need to input here what is my resource group I have to choose and then the name of the log analytics for example I can give here as the USA specific uh, project demo and uh, region and post to that I need to choose the pricing tag so let's click on the pricing tag so here I need to choose the pricing that's nothing but a cost so earlier the cost is mostly associated with OMS or a different other products now log analytics is purely based on the per GB based so I can choose here per GB based pricing and click on tags this is where I can give some kind of you know tags so that I know what I'm trying to do or for my billing purpose and then I can review here and I can simply uh, click on create button that would actually create so I have actually done this step earlier uh, with a different name called US web project demo so let me take it here so once I have created the workspace uh, you have here the different options that can be configured as a first step I need to connect the data source that means I need to pump it or, or the logs should be redirected here at the diagnostic or metrics data and then I need to configure my monitoring solutions so that I can work on it to work on this I need to go to workspace data source section and you see here I have a different type of data which that I can configure here so I have here storage account logs that means I can add here my storage account logs that are uh, stored from in my storage account so as you remember in the previous lecture within the monitoring what we have done is we have redirected all those logs to the storage account now we can take that storage account and read here and associate and then we can run the queries similarly for the activity logs as we talked there are two different uh, type of uh, data which is coming as a signal for us so out of one is the logs other one would be the metrics so here under uh, activity logs you can choose what kind of activity logs you want to you know enable and once we have done that it's still loading in fact uh, once we have done that you can also configure for your resources and on top of it if you want to you know do some kind of automation jobs to be executed you can do it from the automation account which can be configured here so this is all about a workspace specific overview let's jump into the demonstration of how to query how to enable all that can be done as a first step let's configure for Azure activity log so I'll just click on here if you see here it's not connected at this point of time this is very important all I have to do is just click on it and say connect so and you just have to click here connect so that would actually does the magic for us uh, to collect if you see activity log is connected if you don't want you can disconnect that but for now we have already connected now to redirect the logs to our log analytic workspace what we have to do is we have to go to Azure monitoring and simply configure that specific monitoring for those resources so let's say I wanted to configure diagnostic settings for a resource called maybe energies or maybe a different here so let's take some of them if you see here this is enabled but these were not enabled so for me I wanted to configure my maybe demo VM uh, or to be enabled so I'll simply configure this diagnostic settings all metrics I wanted to send it to log analytic services here I can choose multiple uh, multiple I have a multiple workspaces here log analytic out of that my workspaces use web uh, project so I can see that here I wanted to redirect so I can give a meaningful name here for example 
like settings one for demo VMs for Azure web project and simply have to all I have to do is save so now this gets connected like this configuration I should be able to do it that configuration has been saved let's also configure for NSG so I can go for NSG of this so which is already configured but that time we were redirected to the storage account let's configure one more setting for the same thing so I'm just configuring these two logs to be redirected to my log analytics here the project is this and I can give your settings to as the NSG and simply save it so this configuration gets saved so whatever the activities are related to the diagnostic settings are redirected these specific two events or the rules or the log files gets redirected to my workspace log analytic workspace called US web hyphen project demo and I should be able to run from log analytics workspace the queries so let's move to log analytics workspace and read those logs which we are talking about so if you see here I'll just go to my queries under here logs so once I once I click on getting started I would be getting here as the within this window one more window which talks about complete locking information and you have already pre-built in some of the queries that can be used let's say I want number of requests which is count across all the APIs or SQL specific storage account specific lot other uh, things uh, which are pre-built in so if you just don't want those examples simply close that and you have a pre-built in log analytics query information uh, here so this is the uh, this is one way and other way would be to open logs or the query analyzer or query uh, tool you can go to directly to the monitor and click on logs within the monitor so you can click here and this also would open the same thing so just for the comfortness I'll just uh, hide this menu for monitor so that you have a right space and I'll close this and uh, you have here the query uh, this is where you build the query and you get the query results uh, done let's say I have here uh, some of them like alerts example so so in the left side whatever you have here under log management these all are the tables which are categorized when the logs has been reached to log analytics workspace it has categorized in a different way and different tables and all the information has been saved which is coming from our logs to these tables let's take one example here for example as your activity so this has a uh, different uh, functions and other information but you know if you just uh, click on this little eye icon which is a preview datum so that will actually shows what is the information is available from that activity log of Azure activity table so if you see here this is a sample um, data which you are getting the top two and if you just see here or if you just click here see in query editor by clicking this this would actually create automated a uh, query and a query for the specific thing and you also getting the uh, value for this so this is how it looks like so here we need to understand uh, more about this uh, query building process is not the uh, core lecture for this uh, discussion because this is completely a different topic and you can learn easy way from Microsoft documentation on a uh, kick your language how to read or how to edit or how to build your own query and you can make a different functions and other information but for now this is how it looks the information uh, when we query for that specific Azure activity information let's try to build one example query here like I want to for Azure activity I'll simply insert that activity specific but uh, within this activity I wanted to filter based on maybe where uh, my user ID let's say my user ID here if you see here um, the user ID is color is the name so I'll just say where color simply it is popping up and it's giving you as an intelligent way either it's contains or even equals so that's also coming automatically I can give here my 
email ID. Let's see, this is the email ID. And uh, give that a close with the double quotes and run that. So it would actually gives you more information uh, with the 14 different records um, which are coming from Azure Activity Table and uh, if I want you know further level of filter lights I can do it directly from here let's say I want only started uh, status as success or failed all that also I can do it here and equals to contains all that geo specific also I can filter so it's so easy if you know what table you wanted to query opposed to that you can build here dynamically also from the GUI so that way you can get a very similar to your Excel filters let me share with you another useful feature within the query building is like once you have the results you can simply go to one of the sample report or sample information let's say this is uh, one of the information which is coming from their logs so I simply you know scroll down and I want something here maybe let's say the property values status is okay here you may be you know, wanted for error so unfortunately I don't have anything for the error but I can show you for the okay so what I can do is uh, currently records of 14 but what I can do is I can simply uh, status code is okay so instead of I type here as the one more where I can simply click on these three dots and say uh, include okay or include not okay equals or not equals or exclude column so all these possible ones you can build dynamically from the GUI let's say equals okay which is this so it has been put for me automatically and then if I just run it I should be able to get the proper data this time only seven records that are showing if I just you know scroll a little bit right side uh, you see activity substatus is okay only showing so that's how it's very powerful and easy to use you can just check once the documentation and go through it so easy for us to build any complex queries within this KQL language and uh, finally if you want to save this query altogether you can just click on three dots uh, and give a name let's say this is for my uh, status as OK example and I can give you a category this is for my IT some category name simply save so that um, this query can be recalled any point of time let's say you want one more uh, filter uh, the easiest filter you can do here directly you have the filter option you can do uh, whatever the filter and then apply and run so that's going to actually add a another filter for you informational or success so you are getting actually a more complex uh, queries are getting built here dynamically and uh, lastly if you can I can even re recall my saved queries directly from here I just have to go here and open up my query explorer I can see here saved queries or saved solutions uh, so here I can simply go and under IT category I have a status OK so I can re simply recall this and rerun that if you see here it's coming as that and uh, also I have another option and the queries I do have here multiple query options for example if I take it as a virtual machine I can go ahead and run some kind of you know virtual machine specific uh, query let's say uh, specific to the CPU or maybe a disk space all that kind of you know, queries built-in queries can be run and you would get that specific output that's how it's so easy and you have uh, most of the built-in mechanism or built-in queries are already Microsoft defined and if you want you can customize your own queries with a drag and drop or the options like I've shown you earlier uh, you know, easy way to you know, include exclude and then save them and uh, run the required query or you can recall that directly from your reports so it's so easy for you to uh, work on the specific uh, specific to the Azure monitoring uh, logs within this log analytic uh, queries. That being said, uh, we can conclude this lecture. Uh,